Buongiorno, good morning. Expat lifestyle with Babs. Behind me, the Il Duomo, the house of God. Obviously, the spiritual centre of Florence. But only 180 metres away is another special place that many people don't even realise is there. They walk straight past it. I'm taking you there now. In a recent episode, I explored the Duomo, didn't I? I hope you enjoyed that. Well, see that dome in front of me? That's a part of the Medici Chapel, which is connected to the Basilica of San Lorenzo. I hope you enjoy this episode. Don't judge a book by its cover. Expat Lifestyle with Bads here. Welcome to this episode. You can't judge a book by its cover. There's the facade of the Basilica of San Lorenzo. Quite modest, isn't it? But don't be fooled. As always, thumbs up, bell notifications on and subscribe. Shall we go in and have a look? Of course, Andiamo, let's go. Okay, so I'm in the San Lorenzo church, which is just next door to the Medici Chapel, which is, you've got to see that, that's unbelievable in there. Uh, free entry today too. The Basilica of San Lorenzo is one of the oldest churches in Florence. This Renaissance church, the Basilica of San Lorenzo, originally designed by Brunelleschi, is magnificent. The rounded arches, the evenly spaced columns, the perfect symmetry. There's just a wonderful sense of balance within this building. One of the other key things to note about the Basilica is the quantity of paintings lining the walls and side chapels. What do you see? What do you think? When it was consecrated in AD 393, it was actually outside of the city walls. For 300 years, it was Florence's cathedral before the official seat of the bishop was transferred to Santa Reparata, which of course now is underneath the Duomo. In 1418, the Medici decided to begin a series of renovations of this church to turn it into their family temple. Thus, the Basilica is closely connected to the triumphant rise to power of the Medici family. Now, have you noticed all of the natural light? I just think this enhances the Basilica. It works well with the two colours. Have you noticed that also? The white of the walls and the grey of the stone columns and the grey used in other details. So now I take you back to the modest exterior and how beautiful it is inside. Don't judge a book by its cover. Now the crypt of San Lorenzo houses the treasury as well as the graves of Donatella and Cosimo the Elder. Now the courtyard of San Lorenzo, as we can see here, is filled with shadows, arches, columns and garden. Look, on this sunny day, it's just beautiful. So I'll take you for a quick walk around the perimeter of the Basilica just to give you an idea of its, its size. And look, the San Lorenzo area of Florence is beautiful, it really is. Um, it's close to the uh, Mercato Centrale, the central market, the leather markets you can see uh, up ahead. But look at this Basilica. As I said, it looks quite modest, doesn't it? And, as I said, it's quite close to the Il Duomo, isn't it? As we can see there, the top of the, uh, the dome there with the lantern, the bell tower, we can see through there. Uh, back to the Basilica of San Lorenzo. Well worth a visit. Give yourself an hour, hour and a half. And look, this part of the Basilica is known as the Medici Chapel. And just to give you some bearings, there's uh, 
the leather markets through there and that'll take you down to the um, Mercato Centralia, the central market. Look at the facade of this building. Now that's lovely, isn't it? And we're just coming around to the entrance to the Medici Chapel, their private parish church, Pali Medici. So behind me, the Medici Chapel, a part of the Basilica of San Lorenzo, looks quite modest, doesn't it? But hey, don't be fooled. There's the entrance, that'll cost you about 10 euro to get in. The Medici chapels are part of the same huge complex of San Lorenzo. Now, as you can see here, we enter into this low vaulted crypt and we will find several of the Grand Dukes of Tuscany together with their wives, lesser known members of this illustrious Medici family. And from this low vaulted crypt, we walk up the stairs and enter the magnificent chapel of the princess, Mamma Mia. Now, if you're short on time, if you're a Michelangelo fan, if you want to feel like a Medici prince or princess, even for an hour, then include this visit into your schedule. So let's take a moment then and talk about the Medici family. Politically active and economically so powerful, a banking family. The Medicis were one of the most important families of Italy during the Renaissance and their influence extended across Europe. How rich were they? They were on a level with today's billionaires for sure. That's the kind of scale that we're looking at. One estimate? The 17th richest people of all time with an estimated worth of 129 billion. Now the founder of the family fortunes was Giovanni Medici, 1360-1429. Under his leadership, the family bank blossomed and he soon became the richest man in Florence, Italy and no doubt Europe. Did you know four popes were Medicis? The most famous, Giovanni Medici, known as Leo X. He had superb taste in art, like the rest of the family really, and he wanted to rebuild and restructure St Peter's Basilica in Rome with the help of Michelangelo, but there just wasn't enough money. That's why he created the Indulgences, documents declaring that people who contributed to the cathedral were released of sins in exchange for money. Not everybody liked this idea, especially a man that was rising against the church. Martin Luther. For me, this visit has inspired me to delve further into the history of the Medici family and, of course, Michelangelo. Now, the last part of the Medici chapels is the new sacristy, designed by Michelangelo himself and built at the start of the 16th century. The new sacristy was built by order of Pope Leo X to house the mortal remains of his brother Giuliano Medici and his nephew Lorenzo Medici, with Michelangelo being commissioned to design it. So a burial tomb designed for members of the Medici family. When it comes to the high renaissance, Michelangelo is as high as it gets. He was not only one of the best known artists of his day, but probably remains one of the best known artists ever. In my opinion, of course. Donatello, Brunelleschi, Michelangelo and the Medici. All iconic Renaissance individuals, aren't they? And they've all had a big part to play within the Basilica of San Lorenzo. I hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, thumbs up, bell notifications on, and subscribe. I'll see you next episode. And by the way, I've got some travelling coming up too. I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. And I'll see you next episode. Ciao.